Just as you wouldn't build a house without a plan, well, I wouldn't recommend it, you shouldn't build a website without some clear idea of the direction you're going. This doesn't have to take a huge amount of time. In fact, this whole process, of which I've coined the website blueprint, is like a concertina effect. You can extend it over a longer period of time or really compress it if you are building a website in a hurry. But the one thing to take home is that we need 100% to go through this process. So this chapter, as you probably guessed it, is all around the website blueprint, how we can create a bullet point brief in under an hour for our website, how we can then create a sitemap, how we can prioritize our content and making sure that we have our content in three tiers of priority. And finally, we bring all of this together into a quick hand-drawn wireframe that just outlines the structure that we can take into our website builder platform. In this case, Squarespace. Let's take a look. So here's the website blueprint, or at least a truncated version of the process. The full version of this course is available called aptly the website blueprint and it's available on udemy and also the pixel haze academy campus so check it out there i'll also try and leave a link for you as well back to this version this is ideal as a starting point if you're just looking to dip the toe in the water and you're not sure whether you actually even want to go through this process yet so this is a great place to start i like to break down our blueprint process into this skyscraper where we start on the ground floor we're covering our basis the things that we should be considering before even embarking on the project we then move on to keeping it brief. This is to create a short, snappy brief on our website. This can be bullet points. Think of writing a one side of A4 business plan for your website. It doesn't need long sentences. It doesn't even need a huge amount of care and attention into the writing style. It's just about getting what's in your head down on a piece of paper, and it gives you a cornerstone or foundation for you to work from. Next up, we have prioritized content. We need to know what needs to fit in the prime retail space, that top area of our homepage and other key pages on our website, and then the areas that we have to sacrifice to make sure that we're prioritizing the right things. The great thing about website is not set in stone. So you could prioritize something for one month or one year and then shuffle it around as your business evolves or as seasons change. We then move into the sitemap. This isn't something we're going to be covering in a huge amount of detail on this particular version of the course, but think of this as a family tree for your website content. You start with the home page and then branching off, you've got your key pages. I'm assuming if you're just starting out, you're probably going to be building or overseeing a relatively small website. If you're looking for something that's more detailed, then maybe the full version of this blueprint course will be for you. But if you're looking at between five and 15 pages on your website, then we probably don't need to worry too much about a sitemap for that size of website. Then we move on to respect the grid. Squarespace is built on a 24 column grid. It used to be 12 column grid and the older versions still work with that. We're not going to be covering that in this particular version of the course. If you're interested in finding out about the grid, I've created a number of YouTube videos that cover this aspect. And I've actually used Lego as an example to describe how the 12 and 24 column grid works. And in particular, how that's adapted with a new version of Fluid Engine in Squarespace. Finally, to wrap up, I'll give you some visual examples of wireframes that I've created in the past. They're not overly fancy in terms of how they look. We've got chalkboards in the majority of the rooms in our studio. When we have a client in for a workshop, we will work through those wireframes with them. So now we know the flow that we're going to be going through in the next few minutes. I just wanted to explain that this is a concertina process. We can expand and retract this information depending on the scale of project that we're working on. It's also the level of demands that our clients need. If this is a small brochure web website that isn't crucial to the day-to-day -day running of your business, then that's very different to you selling e-commerce and going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the big players in your industry. Level one, cover your bases, not your backside. Even if it's just going for a walk and thinking through these different areas, I'd recommend writing them down if you can. Think of these key areas, market trends, your overheads, and competitor analysis. Market trends, the growth of decline in your industry. COVID's a perfect example of external impacts and events that can impact your industry and therefore as a knock-on consequence, your business. Then think about your overheads. In this case, your website overheads. If you choose Squarespace, plans start at £12 per month plus VAT. That's based on annual plans. If you're not in the UK, different taxes will apply. Once you build your website, are you aiming to turn it into a lead generation tool as opposed to a lead conversion tool? I like to think of it as planting the seed or answering the call. Answering the call websites, lead conversions are much easier to plan for because you're already finding a way of getting people to the website. The website then needs to reflect your business, your culture, what you stand for and what you are able to offer the user. The website's not about you. It's about your audience and what they can get from there. If you're going down the planting the seed route and looking to turn this into its own lead generation tool 
you're probably going to need to invest a lot of time or money into marketing costs to get that website potentially found on Google or integrated into social media processes where you create funnels. Because this is a beginner course, we're not going to be going into any huge detail on those areas. Finally, if you're looking to build an e-commerce website, this course does not cover e-commerce. You will be wanting to think about shipping costs of your products. Final section, competitor analysis. Are you looking to target local or national? What's your position in the market? Have you got any new innovations? And do you have an edge? We'll be covering edge in more detail, which is your unique selling points. What can you do that your competitors can't? So moving on to our brief, we're talking about a bullet point brief that can be done under 60 minutes for smaller websites. It may only take us 15 minutes to create this. We'd start with these key sections that I know are tried and tested, so they will work for you. Think of the background of your business, audience, edge, deliver, and measure. Audience are your target demographics. Who is this website speaking to? Who does it need to resonate with? And what does it need to say as a result? Edge, what can you offer that your direct competitors or indirect competitors are unable to do. So it could be that you have a revolutionary new product. It could be that you have a service offering that's second to none. What are the key deliverables of the website? The way I like to work with this is if you have to review it in 12 months time, what will we need to have achieved for this website to be deemed a success? And finally, how are we going to measure those deliverables? So the measurables and deliverables go hand in hand. For example, our target could be to double the number of visitors that come to our website within a 12 month window. Squarespace Analytics will allow us to measure that and come back with a clear response. Have we hit that target? Yes or no. Some measurables might be more ambiguous. For example, the feeling that customers get when they visit our website. We may have to run a survey. We may have to use other metrics to collect that information. Have a think about it. You can keep it really simple and it could just be I'm just going to regularly check on a monthly basis how many users are coming to our website and against that figure, how many inquiries are we getting for our services? If you just delve in a little bit with the background, we need to think about our company. And the way I like to do this is tell your story with the five W's. And those are who, what, why, where, and when. There's also a bonus one, how, which isn't a W, which annoys me. When we just want to run through this, who you are and also who your audience are, what you can deliver for them. Why are you doing what you're doing? What gets you up on a Monday morning? The cultural aspect of your business has become more important now than it ever has been before. More and more customers are looking to get behind a cause and a values and a cause-based business can have a very strong presence. Where is your business based and where can they contact you? And also when, if you have opening hours with a physical store, then putting them on the website is really important. If you're running a series of events or workshops, having that information is important to make sure our customers aren't having to delve in to find out more. Finally, how this is the call to action aspect. How can your customers get in touch with you? So here's a quick example with Edge. These are our USPs, unique selling points, things that simply set us apart from our competition. Statements or messages that we can get around and say, this is why we want to work with you and this is why you should work with us. Here's an example from Whole Foods. We've got quite a dry, uninteresting USP. The quality of our products is second to none. When we talk about sharpening our edge, we want to work on the language so we can turn a USP into a sales message on our website, something that resonates with our audience. This should really resonate with the customers of Whole Foods. The highest standards were available, so we created them. But have a think about what your KPIs are, what sets you apart from your audience. I'd recommend developing a simple reporting system, even though it's the simplest of simplest metrics, for example, number of visitors to your site or even number of sales on your growing e-commerce store. By tracking them, you're probably going to increase your performance because by not burying your head in the sand and saying, okay, our website's going to be successful one day, but until that point, we're not going to spend too much time worrying about it. The more time you spend looking at the metrics usually means that you are going to be making adjustments, adding content to your website finding new ways of reaching your audience and reaching a wider audience, which will in turn act like a self-propelling flywheel. We're building up momentum with our website by checking the data and then acting upon it, then checking revised data to see if those changes have improved it. Moving on to the next part. Now we know what needs to be in our website. We know what our key performance indicators for the website are. We know what our unique selling points and what sets us apart from our competition. We know who our audience is, thought about the personas. We can start thinking about the key content on our page. Here's an example where I would break down the page into three tiers of priority, starting with the most important. We often think of our tier one content as the billboard. If you think of a roadside billboard, you've got three seconds at most if you've got a car driving past to capture their attention. These billboards aren't generally word heavy. They are one statement 
segment is sometimes a unique selling point. It's sometimes a message that resonates with a specific audience or demographic. But generally, it's a combination of a key statement plus an image or a video that really grabs attention. Think of driving past a billboard as a perfect analogy to the amount of time that you've got to get your message across to your end user. And the load time of the page is included in that. So if your website has a wonderful message with a really vibrant detailed video, yet it takes eight seconds to fully load the page, you probably lost a good chunk of your audience unless you're in an industry where there's more patience. For example, a videographer or photographer website, someone looking at the website may be prepared to wait a little bit longer because they are scrutinizing the work that you've created. Quality trumps speed. An exercise I would often do is to break it down into three tiers of priority by using colored post-it notes. Then you can work as a team or get volunteers in to help you with your plan. You could have key services that you offer, the culture of your business, clients or customers with case studies, news articles. These can all be on different post-it notes and then you can shuffle them from tier one to tier three. Really nice quick effect to visualize that content prioritization. Other areas that are really important with this are thinking about what our call to actions are. It's a fancy word for a button in most cases or a link to where the customer can take action. For example, you can have a signpost section on your homepage. A signpost is just a small section or link, usually from a landing page or a homepage to a service or product page. You could put a product category as a signpost, which could be shoes. That button then links to a dedicated page around shoes. The button that links to it is called a signpost. And those signposts can be used as images, as video blocks. It could, there could be many reasons how you could display that signpost and link. So sitemap, think of that family tree. We're not going to cover this in any more detail today. One thing to note is that Squarespace supports two levels on the menu system that goes across the top on Squarespace. You've got the top level and then you've got a drop down menu. It doesn't support a third level. When we start working in third levels, which can be achieved by using things like summary blocks and blog posts, have a think about whether you really want to have that third section. If you do, this version of this course is probably a little bit too thin on the ground for you. I'd recommend going into our Squarespace Box of Tricks course or starting out with the website Blueprint course which will provide more information of how you can plan for a larger, more unruly website. Finally, wireframing. This is a quick sketch to illustrate your website before you start building on your website builder of your choice. In the remainder of this course, we'll be focusing on Squarespace, as you'd expect. Here, we're thinking about that content prioritization, how we can design a hero unit, the menu. Are there any signposting blocks, how we can lay them out? Other information like a short paragraph introduction. The new Fluid Engine on Squarespace allows us to do an awful lot. There is a huge amount of customization in terms of how your website looks and feels. We are not building ourselves a prison here. We don't need to worry about making our final website look identical to our wireframe. The wireframe is just a guide, a simple plan to hold us to account to make sure that we are putting the right content in and we're not missing anything out in the design process that we have to shoehorn in at a later stage. So that's the website blueprint. If you want to get started, here's our affiliate link with Squarespace. It helps us out to allow us to create more free courses like this. If you want to use the code PIXELHAZE20, you can get 20% discount off your first annual or monthly plan. It's not 100%, but it's certainly not nothing. Finally, if you are thirsty for more information about all of this, you can use the following code and get 28 days free on our Pixel Haze Academy campus. This houses all of our courses, including our Squarespace Box of Tricks, which is approaching 10 hours worth of regularly updated and improved content all about Squarespace, plus a number of other courses, including those targeted at e-commerce. Don't have to go down that route, though, and we'll catch you in the next chapter where we'll start having a look at Squarespace and the setup process. Thank you.